Hello, welcome back. You are in week two of Mule 4 in depth training from Seva Prasad. This is Seva Prasad Valaru. Uh, first of all, congratulations on successfully completing week one in this seven week training. If you can spend one and a half hour to two hours a day and complete watching the video and also complete the exercises in week seven by seventh week you'll be able to clear the certification exam if you are planning to do so or you will be able to confidently clear the interviews so maintain the same let us continue with today's topic today you'll understand about deploying to standalone server till now we have been deploying our applications on an embedded runtime within any point studio so whenever we actually run as application run the project within studio what it is doing first it is actually doing a maven build and once build is successful it is starting an embedded mule runtime if you can see here let me stop this i want you to observe this here it is saying mule home is set to this directory this mule is right now under plugins folder that means mule server is running as a plugin into any point studio this is fine during development but during uh, production if you want to deploy for production you cannot run it in any point studio right any point studio is only for development so for production purposes, we need a standalone server, which runs on its own and we deploy it. So how to actually uh, use standalone server? Let me tell you. First of all, we need to download Mule Runtime. So I'll Google for Mule Runtime download. I will not take the sponsored link. Here is a link to download uh, uh, Mule Runtime. I will select product version as Mule standalone, uh, version as latest, operating system. And if you give all the details, you will get a mail <clears throat> with download link. I have already downloaded this Mule runtime. This is the zip file. So it is very simple to run it. You just have to extract it. Again, I'm clearly saying, don't extract it using Windows Extractor. Extract it with something like WinRAR or 7 zip So I'm extracting. And uh, <clears throat> to start Mule Runtime, it is very simple. In the bin folder, you can just click on this mule.bat. But for running Mule, it requires Java. So before you run mule.bat, you need to make sure that Java is installed. As I told you, Mule is compatible with Java 8 and Java 11. So let us use Java 11. I have already installed um, <clears throat> Java 11 in C drive program files Java JDK. This is my Java installation directory. So what I need to do is I need to set this environment variables. So I'll show you the environment variables to be set so i'm going to environment variables first thing is i need to set an environment variable called as java underscore home this is in capitals and you should point to your jdk folder remember this is not pointing to bin directory it is up to jdk okay then path you have to set and make it to point to jdk bin so these two things you need to do before you start mule.bat. So I have done that already. Now, if I just click on mule.bat, mule runtime will start. If you see, mule is up and kicking this message. That means mule runtime started successfully. Now, how to deploy your application inside this? It is very simple. You have to just put your application under apps folder. If you have observed for the first time, whenever I run my mule runtime, 
there will be a folder called as dot mule created inside this standalone folder and it contains some information regarding the runtime so this we don't need to care we'll see about more about dot mule folder once we talk about some concepts like object stores etc but just understand that mule runtime will keep some metadata inside dot mule folder within this okay and if you want to deploy your app you have to keep your application jar file inside apps folder so see what i'm going to do i don't want to run my application inside studio so i'll right click and export this application i'll click on export under mule <coughs> under mule here you can see any point studio project to mule deployable archive i'll select next so i want it to be exported on my desktop so while exporting i am attaching project sources and also uh, project modules and dependencies will be added finish so on desktop the jar will be exported let it be exported. Okay, it is saying it is exported to desktop. Okay. Now, if I just go here, where is this? Yeah, here is my jar file. I will copy it. And I just need to paste it inside apps folder. See, I'm inside apps folder. I'm pasting it. So you can see in the mule runtime console it identified about the new app initializing the app and you can see that the jar file has been extracted <clears throat> and now you can see app started once the app started successfully you can see that there will be a file called as app name dash anchor file app name dash anchor file this anchor file is generated so if anchor file is generated successfully, that means your application is started successfully or deployed successfully. Now, let me test. I'll go to Postman and I'll try to give a request. Yep, I got same response as expected. That means it is running. Now, I want to undeploy the app. Very simple. I just have to delete the anchor file. If I just open the anchor file, it says delete this file while mule is running to remove the artifact in a clean way so if you want to undeploy your application don't delete this folder delete the anchor file <clears throat> and let us see here the app also will get undeployed just wait and see in the console yes you can see disposing application undeployed the application and in this folder apps folder the folder also is deleted so that means application is undeployed. So very simple to deploy. Copy the jar file inside apps folder. It will get deployed. And remove the anchor file. It will get undeployed. So again, if I want to deploy it, again, I will copy. Paste it. <coughs> so again, it will get redeployed. So very simple to actually deploy and undeploy okay but what is happening behind the scenes actually whenever i say i am running a mule runtime what is happening let us try to understand this is very important to understand please concentrate and listen okay so how did i start my mule runtime by going to bin and i executed mule.bat right what is happening when i run mule.bat so I executed mule.bat. Actually, it is internally starting a Java application. There will be Java class behind the scenes. So whenever I execute java.bat, actually it is executing a Java application. So normally, if you know Java, to start a Java application, you have to use Java space, a class name which contains main method. So executing mule.bat actually is setting some 
environment variables and then executing java class so java class if you are executing the jvm will be started and uh, inside the jvm my application will start running but there is a small condition what will happen if there is some problem and jvm crashes due to something like out of memory my runtime will crash right so actually um, this is one problem what mule.bat will do is it will not start the java application directly it will launch something called as java service wrapper there are two uses of this java service wrapper what will happen is this java service wrapper will start as a parent process and this java service wrapper will actually start the java application and this java jvm will be the child process so in case if the jvm crashes the wrapper will be pulling and checking the health of this child and if this jvm crashes it will automatically restart it so that is one purpose of java service wrapper and another purpose is if you want to run mule runtime as a service that means in windows you want to run mule as windows service or in linux you want to run it as daemon service whenever your uh, operating system boots up you want mule runtime also to start if you want to do so yes mule can actually run as a windows service how i'll stop this first of all right now when i clicked on mule.bat it is not starting as a service it just ran directly but if you want to run as a service what you have to do is you have to go to cmd in the directory of uh, mule server bin then you just have to execute mule space start hmm. see now it is saying um, this java service wrapper is running do you want to allow yes so what is it saying um, mule enterprise service is not installed the specified service do not exist as an installed service okay if i just uh, execute mule space start it will not start press any key to continue so what i will do is i'll write mule space install let us see again it is asking to give permissions yes now it is saying uh, mule enterprise uh, edition service is installed okay let me go to services uh, i'll search for mule enterprise edition yes it is not running but it is configured as start type as automatic if you want to start this as a service what you have to do is again you have to execute mule space start so this will start mule runtime as a service what is it saying was launched but failed to start press any key to continue i can see the logs under mule underscore ee what is that let us see it is good to see the logs now the log files can be seen under logs uh, mule underscore ee let me open uh, so let us see the problem what is it saying unable to execute java command hey java home slash bin slash java is not present it is saying is it not there java home slash bin slash java yes it is there what is it saying java underscore home um 
did i set the environment variable java underscore home echo percentage java underscore home percentage yep it is coming okay but let me go and check in env i have configured env variables java home is set but i have set it in user variables okay let me set it in um system variables java underscore home yes so i have set it as system variable okay okay now once i do any environment variable setup i have to close and open the command prompt so again i'll go to bean directory and let me open yes now i'll start mule space start let us see again i'll give permission it is saying starting enterprise edition server waiting for it to start in the meantime if i see the logs it looks like it is starting waiting to start so let us see yes it is saying mule enterprise edition service started so very good i wanted to actually show you the problem many people face a problem while starting mule as a service why because in the env variables environment variables sometimes if you are setting java underscore home as user variable it will not be picked up when it is running as a service in the background it has to be a system variable so i wanted you to see this problem that is the reason why i have initially set java underscore home as user variable it didn't work then i have set java underscore home as system variable it worked so now you understood how to start mule runtime as a service i want to stop it mule uh, stop this will actually stop the service and um, okay but still let us see under services um is a mule enterprise edition still there okay now i will say mule space uninstall let us check is there uninstall just like install uninstall i said uninstall but i it looks like uh that uninstall argument is ignored and it is starting mule okay it looks like mule started oh but that is not what is expected i'll press control space hey but let us see here under services if i just refresh yeah it didn't start as a service it directly started if i use mule space start it'll start a service okay fine now i'll press ctrl c it will stop let it stop now mule space remove if i use okay again it is invoking java service wrapper mule enterprise edition service removed okay let us go to services and refresh is there a mu only no you don't see mule right now right it is removed as a service so now you understood how we are adding it as a service how we are removing it as a service etc right to actually make a java application run as a service this service wrapper also will help so that is the reason why whenever i execute mule.bat first service wrapper will start and that is a parent process and that service wrapper will start the java application as a child so in case if jvm crashes automatically the service wrapper will start so this service wrapper is from a company called as tanuki 
So we say that mule internally uses tanuki. Okay, let us check. I will start now. By just executing mule, it will start in the foreground, not as a service. You can see actually um, on the top. Um, you can see, yes, Java service wrapper, standard edition, Tanuki, etc. Right? So that is what is happening. This Tanuki, whenever I execute mule.bat, mule.bat is internally starting Tanuki wrapper. Tanuki wrapper is starting Java application, right? But this Tanuki will read from a configuration file. So I'll go to conf folder. And here I can see wrapper.conf. Okay, in wrapper.conf, actually, there are a lot of key value pairs. So, all these key value pairs are configured in wrapper.conf. You can see there are hyphen D options, hyphen XX options, etc. Let me tell you about these options. Normally, whenever you are launching Java application, you use something like Java space class name. Normally, whenever we are launching a Java application, um, Java space class name. But how do I pass command line arguments to Java application? After class name, you can pass anything X, Y, Z, whatever. Whatever you pass as after class name will be command line arguments. But how do you pass environment variables? If you want to pass environment variables, environment variables are nothing but key value pairs. You will use hyphen D, K1. Key1 one is equal to value 1. Again, hyphen D, key2 is equal to value 2. So like that, you can pass multiple environment variables for a Java application. And in the Java code, we will be able to retrieve the values of k1 and k2. Similarly, if you want to pass any virtual memory arguments for the JVM, there are hyphen x options. Like for example, hyphen xmx, if I write 1024m, that means maximum heap size for JVM is 1024mv. Like that, there are a lot of other options like hyphen X and hyphen XX options. You can also pass this JVM arguments before the class name. Okay. Then coming to Mule, as I said, Mule also is a Java application, right? Internally, Tanuki will be uh, executing the Java application like this. But Tanuki will read from a configuration file, as I said, inside conf, wrapper.conf. Here, there are a lot of key value pairs. You can see hyphen D options, hyphen XX options, etc. configured, right? Up to number, number 20. Yes, up to number 20, they are, they are configured. So, all these options will be used by Tanuki while starting the Java application. And they will be passed as hyphen D options and hyphen X options. If you want to pass any environment variables, you can also pass it through wrapper.conf. See, up to 20 we have, right? What I have done is additional.21, I have written hyphen D, X equals to 1 to 3. So like that, I'm passing an environment variable X with value one, two, three. So like that, we can also pass our own environment variables through wrapper.conf. Okay, so that's about how to start Mule runtime and use it. Very simple, right? We just have to deploy. If you want to deploy applications, copy the jar file into apps. Undeploy, remove, and carbide. And one more thing, logs of your application can be found under logs folder. There's a file with application name, right? First app, this is the application log. But how, where did I configure? This is the path. 
if you see in your application under frc main resources log 4j2.xml here is a configuration if you see the rolling file appender configured it is pointing to mule home directory slash file separate slash logs slash first app dot log here it is configured so based on this the log file is created under logs folder of mule home directory if you want to customize the log file path you can customize it here within your application but by default you can find the logs under logs folder and you can see lib contains the libraries all the libraries and there are a lot of other folders like policies services domains etc we will see more about that whenever that specific topic comes that's all we have understood about what is happening when i start my mule runtime but i'm not happy because <clears throat> if i want to deploy my application i have to copy my jar file inside apps folder manually it will be good if there is something like a, if i can actually upload through a browser if i have a .jar file and through browser if i can upload and if it can get deployed on the mule runtime it will be very good for deployment through browser i should be able to manage my application deploy and deploy or through browser i should be able to stop this runtime or restart this runtime it will be good right yes in any point platform there is something called as runtime manager by using which we can manage the runtimes we can start and stop a runtime we can undeploy deploy applications on the runtime etc so in our next lecture of day 6 we will understand about how to use this runtime manager for managing the runtimes that's all in this video see you in the next lecture